Hello, uh, my name is uh, Pastor Mike Nesbitt, and I am serving the Lord at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Elizabeth, Illinois. This is episode seven. There are many people who believe that a worldwide flood never existed. But according to God, it did. Our text for today, written by Moses, is Genesis chapter 7. and reads as follows. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. I take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens also, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth, forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground." And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters came upon the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood, of clean animals and of animals that are not clean, and of birds and of everything that creeps on the ground, two and two, male and female, went into the ark with Noah, as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days, the waters of the flood came upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and the rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah and his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them entered the ark. They and every beast according to its kind, and all the livestock according to their kinds, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, according to its kind, and every bird, according to its kind, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded. And the Lord shut them in. The flood continued forty days on the earth. The waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. Waters prevailed and increased greatly on the earth. And the ark floated on the face of the waters, and the waters prevailed so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. The waters prevailed above the mountains, covering them fifteen cubits deep, and all flesh died that moved on the earth. Birds, livestock, beasts, all swarming creatures that swarm on the earth and all mankind. Everything on the dry land in whose nostrils was the breath of life died. He blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens. They were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left and those who were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed on the earth 150 days. 
There are many people who believe that a worldwide flood never existed. These same people take a look at the Earth's topography and they say that many of the mountains, many of the hills, many of the valleys where rivers run were formed over millions and millions of years. But God says that this is not so. That the earth is less than 10,000 years old. We saw that in the genealogy. And he also said that the flood was worldwide. There is evidence of this everywhere. Now, I don't know about you, but when I travel from my house to the river in Galena, a town about 15 miles away, before I reach the river, I go down a steep hill. The river is in a valley. Then after you cross the river, then you go up another hill to get to the other, once you're on the other side. Now, many people believe that over millions of years, that river carved out the rock and the ground and everything around it. And now all that we see is just a remnant of what remains. Think about the Grand Canyon. Think about the Colorado River that is on the bottom of it. Do you honestly believe that that river over millions of years carved out the Grand Canyon? No. God says in verse number 19, And the waters prevailed so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. Verse 20, The waters prevailed above the mountains, covering them 15 cubits deep. All of the mountains, all of the dry land was covered by water. Take a look at the Mississippi River Valley. Do you think that was carved out by the river over a long time? No, it was not. It was carved out by the massive flood, the massive flood that prevailed over the earth. A wall of water came down the Mississippi River, the Galena River, the Colorado River, every river on the earth. A huge wall of water came down, rushing through, causing all of that erosion to take place. This gives us evidence that there was a worldwide flood. There is many other evidence also. We don't have time here to discuss that. But what is most important is that on account of mankind's sin, God's heart was grieved. And when his heart was grieved, he made the decision to wipe out our sin with the flood. The flood waters washed all of the sinful people away. Yet God saved a remnant. Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives, and all of the animals, two by two, were saved that were on the ark. God could have destroyed everything, but he did not. God loves us, and God wants to rescue us all from this sinful earth. Was all of the sin destroyed through the flood? No. As we'll see, In a few days, sin continued even after the flood waters subsided. But one thing that we can remember is this. 
A long time ago, on account of our sin, God destroyed the world with the flood. He only saved those who were willing to listen to God and obey. In the future, the earth will be destroyed by fire. Everything on the earth will be consumed by those flames. But God promises that he will save all of those who are willing to his, listen to him, who are willing to hear the good news about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Those who are willing to let God help them believe, trust, we will be saved because of what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross. Thanks be to God that the flood was worldwide. We see evidence of it everywhere. And most especially, we see that God saved Noah and his family. He preserved all of the kinds of animals because God loves us. He has a plan for us. It did not end in the days of Noah. Thanks be to God.